I'm driving the 2022 Toyota RAV4 Prime XSE. This is around $50,000 just over, and for 2023, the prices are now available. It's got maybe a, just a hair more expensive, but despite any price raises or even at this 2022 model's price, it is still the best Toyota out there for the money. Today, I'm gonna show you why. <laughs> We're in full EV mode, quick zero to 60. That initial torque response is just excellent if you're not used to it in a plug-in hybrid. Zero to 60 and full electric mode in about 10 seconds. That's with air conditioning on. Now, this RAV4 Prime has over 300 horsepower when you account in the two and a half liter up front. But we're not going to fire on the engine until we run out of EV range. That is one of the strong suits of the RAV4 Prime. I haven't used the engine at all. I put almost 200 miles on this vehicle, taking my daughters to school, taking my family to boo at the zoo, uh, taking them grocery shopping, putting a bunch of stuff in the back. This thing is a Swiss army knife of efficiency and practicality. And I am in love with the RAV4 Prime. Been driving it mainly in the city under 50 55 miles an hour and the amount of efficiency i'm getting in fully electric mode is just absurd 3.7 miles per kilometer and on the really cool mornings i didn't need to use the ac i was getting 3.8 miles per uh, kilowatt hour and that sort of efficiency is impressive in a fully electric vehicle and it is even more so impressive here on a a half electric vehicle. I do just plug this thing in overnight. So I've been taking my kids to school, doing errands, uh, putting maybe 30, 40 miles on the battery. Uh, that accounts for nearly all of my daily necessities. Then just plug it in at night once a day and it's fully topped off by the time I need to take the kids back out in the morning. It is so smooth. This thing is whisper quiet and for the most part, it's almost luxury quality at high speeds. It's a little bit heavier than the RAV4 Hybrid and it feels more substantial. Everything in here feels very well put together. Because of the added weight, Toyota, especially in this XSC, has made it a little bit stiffer. The steering feels great, the brakes feel great, uh, as well as just when you're throwing in the turns, it feels very solid. Something that isn't very intrinsic to Toyotas. They're typically very soft riding and not that fun to throw in the corners, but this RAV4 Prime, uh, especially in this XSC grade, is fun to throw in the turns. Now I'm about ready to run out of EV range on this plug-in hybrid. Toyota lists it a little over 40 miles of fully electric range. I'll share what I was able to get with this vehicle once I run out of this EV range. It's looking good so far uh, that I'm going to beat those estimations. Now, I haven't been driving highway. I've been keeping, like I said, really under 55 miles an hour for the most part. Get into the brakes a little bit here using that regen. The brake feels really good. The steering is just surprising for a Toyota, especially a Toyota SUV. So everything in here just feels very, very accurate and very like tightened down in this XSE RAV4 Prime. We do have a digital rear view mirror here. This thing is loaded to the gills and it better be for around 50K. A tur turning radius here is very tight. I didn't even need to go to the outside lane there. So that's pretty impressive. The exterior of this XSE grade looks really, really cool, especially with this supersonic red with the black two-tone. Got the panel roof on here. You got the 19 inch wheels, the cool uh, crossbars, the roof rails on top. So this thing definitely looks the part, but it definitely doesn't look that much different than any other uh, RAV4 hybrid XSE either at that point. And in 2022, they refreshed the headlights, uh, they refreshed a couple other things in the vehicle, and the XSE non-primes get those vertical LED daytime running lights as well. So it says I got zero miles left on the range. I'm waiting for the engine. There it is. The engine is kicked on for the first time at 182.4 miles on trip A. I started this off at around 100 and 34 so quick math i mean that's what 48 48 miles <laughs> I, I think i think that's 48 miles of ev range ac on uh look, bringing my kids around we, we picked up groceries today so that's not even best case scenario that's just me going by the speed limit being somewhat responsible and doing a couple zero to 60s in there as well which is going to burn through uh, your kilowatts pretty quickly going 55 miles an hour or so i'm getting about 40 miles per gallon 
Uh, so even when you run out of that EV range, it won't be quite as efficient as the normal RAV4 hybrid because that vehicle is going to weigh less with the much smaller battery pack. It's probably about the tenth of the size of this battery pack. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more efficient when your battery is depleted. And even with the gasoline engine helping out, I feel like there's plenty of power here. I'm not foot down, mind you, just regular acceleration. And it's pretty effortless, super smooth because there's no gears for this thing to row through. It has its ECVT setup, just like pretty much any other Toyota hybrid system. Now you can also use this as a mobile generator as well. Heck, you can even use this engine with this button uh, to top off the battery. I don't know why you'd want to do that. That's pretty inefficient. But if you didn't want to run your engine, for example, let's say in a camp campground, you want it nice and quiet, um, you could run the engine to, to to uh, boost up the battery before you get there and then run it uh, in pure silence with the battery topped off. But Toyota's really proud of how this thing accelerates when you add the gasoline engine as assistance. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into sport mode. Yes, it has different driving modes, eco, normal, and sport. And I'm gonna torque brake it. I, uh, last time I did something like this, it was in the RX 450H Plus, which is very similar to this vehicle. Torque brake and go. A little bit of wheel spin and uh, we'll get to 60. There it is 6.1 and that's uh, with one foot roll off, one foot roll out off. So yeah, 6.1 seconds zero to 60 when you account for the gasoline engine. It doesn't feel particularly quick now that I've been in electric cars that can rattle off zero to 60s in about four seconds, but this is still at six seconds, zero to 60, pretty much faster than anything else on the street. And like I said, this is the first time I've used a gasoline engine since testing this, putting over uh, 180 miles on it now. And I never once felt like I needed more power than the, what the fully electric motors can give me. And that's just keeping up with traffic, you know, going up to about 55 miles an hour my normal commute. So there are two grades of the RAV4 Prime here in the United States. There's this XSE, when you load it up with everything, it goes for over $50,000. Maybe it's the most desirable, but you could save maybe six or seven grand to get the normal SE version. And it's not gonna look quite as cool or have you know heated rear seats or a panel roof or all the extra bells and whistles like the 360 camera here. But it's gonna drive the same, it's gonna have the same performance, and you might even be able to get slightly better range on it since the wheels are slightly smaller. Um, so yeah, it might be the better pick of the two, but the thing is the RAV4 Prime in general is just so hard to get a hold of. When I tried to build it in Florida, uh, it wouldn't let me build it with my zip code. Toyota said on the website, um, it is extremely limited in my area and wouldn't even open up the builder. So I had to put in a California zip code for me to even build out the 2023 model. Also for 2023, you get the upgraded software here, the new Toyota interface. So you'll be able to have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Um, you'll have a fully digital 12 inch screen, probably on the XSE and on the SE, you'll have this seven inch screen, which is more than adequate for me. I don't mind the analog gauges. And, they get the job done. Now this particular XSE has the head-up display equipped in it, uh, which I could live without. I feel like the MID behind the steering wheel is uh, more than enough. And yes, it is nice to see that the speed is up there. And when you're using the radar cruise control, it is nice to see if, if it has the lane tracing enabled, etc. But it's totally not, not necessary. And it's something I could live without in the SE grade, for example. So what if you can't get your hands on the RAV4 Prime? Is there any other plug-in hybrid like this in the Toyota lineup? And, and the answer is yes. Well, the Prius Prime is pretty much impossible to get your hands on because they've just uh, canceled this generation as a ramp up for a new generation. So stay tuned as I'll bring you guys that news when we get it. But if you want to spend more than 51K, on a Lexus plug-in hybrid. The NX plug-in hybrid uh, is available with the exact same powertrain uh, with a little bit nicer interior. Is it worth a premium? Maybe. I mean, the powertrain itself is worth the price of admission no matter which vehicle you get it on. And that includes the most expensive RX 450H Plus, which is now available in Europe, but it isn't available at launch here in the United States. RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid powertrain is an A+. You plug it into the already existing excellent RAV4 and you just make everything a little bit tighter and uh, more snappier in here, which they've done in this XSE model. And it's just an absolute home run. And it's no wonder why 
the vehicle is extremely limited in my area. So Toyota, Panasonic, hopefully you can build enough batteries to <laughs> supply the world uh, for the demand of the RAV4 Prime, the NX and RX plug-in hybrids, and, and whatever other vehicle you decide to slot this amazing plug-in hybrid powertrain into. Oh, we just passed a Venza. They are using putting it into the Venza in Japan, uh, which is the Harrier over there. So they're starting to roll out how many vehicles and models they put it into, but unfortunately it's still almost like a forbidden fruit, a, a unicorn to get our hands on in the United States, unfortunately. But hey man, it's just been an, an amazing time with this vehicle, uh, taking my kids to school, doing family stuff, and typical errands, and EV mode the whole time. It feels like an electric car, uh, but without that range anxiety uh, and just the, you know that overall Toyota quality put behind it in the best way possible. I got into there. Oh, one last thing. This vehicle is not perfect. Don't expect everything to be state of the art because this 360 camera on it, whether you're going forwards or backwards, is still stuck in prehistoric times. I do sit up really high in here, and I don't know if the floor is higher in this vehicle compared to the normal RAV4. I actually bumped my head coming out of this RAV4 prime once uh, earlier this week so i've been having to duck my head so i don't hit my head on the roof as i get in and out of the vehicle so uh, i wish the the vehicle sat or i wish the seat sat a little bit lower but other than that i got to cut myself off thanking you guys for watching uh i can't wait to see what you have to say about this amazing vehicle down below um yeah it's pretty much perfect toyota you made the near perfect vehicle just make it more widely available i know it's easier said than done thank you for watching have a great day guys Peace out.